everybody. Thank you for joining me for this tarot read. Uh, so I want to talk about karma in this read. I kept getting a karmic vibe with these cards uh, when I was when I was shuffling ahead of time. We got the numerology deck and the gilded tarot. Uh, so we're going to pay attention to those numbers on the numerology deck too, guys, because they might have a special meaning for you. I want to know what we're talking about. Why why karma came up for me when I was shuffling these cards? Perseverance. You know what? This is. I know. I just know exactly what it is. Now that I've pulled this card, this is going to be like karmic rewards. This is like karmic rewards for being able to overcome something that's going on in your life, being able to persevere, being able to make the best of a situation or learn some sort of universal life lesson. I know that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in this read. I can already feel it. Uh, so we do have relationship change and parenting. Domestic harmony, financial discipline, and music. Hmm? That parenting, it does not necessarily mean uh, that somebody is a parent. It could mean that. This could speak to a relationship that you had with somebody where you kind of felt like you had to be in charge of everything or you felt like you had to parent somebody or somebody was was immature in a certain way. This could be some sort of a relationship change too, where maybe a child is getting older and growing up or moving away, or a relationship with a parent, the dynamic is changing, domestic harmony. But this is about finding balance in the home life. This was a change within the home life where things were a bit disrupted. Uh, financially, there might've been some issues going on too that we're trying to sort of sort out or get back on top of. Uh, that music card speaks to joy. That's what I see in that music card. Uh, this is like uh, doing something that helps you to relax. This is like finding happiness, finding joy. Uh, in your everyday life, we also have Knight of Cups too. Let's see, how does he fit in? Because he is tied to some sort of harmony. He's tied to an emotional victory. This is like finding balance, finding balance in the situation. Ace of Cups, like a new beginning, starting fresh. Starting fresh, something did change here. A relationship did change. Queen of Swords. So she tends to be somebody who's a little bit more uh, analytical, a little bit less emotional. She can also be somebody who moves with sort of honesty and integrity in her life. Swords can be indicative of air signs. So she might represent a person in your life uh, or yourself uh, who is maybe a Gemini, a Libra, or an Aquarius, possibly. Most often these court cards are just speaking to to the qualities that they represent in a person. I do feel like emotional coldness here. Like maybe somebody who just doesn't speak about their feelings a lot. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. It's just somebody who doesn't who doesn't open up a lot. They're not really warm and fuzzy. They're not the warm and fuzzy type. And then we have the King of Cups. That probably makes for that probably makes for some fun. These these cards are about as fucking opposite as you guys can get. Uh, Cups is emotions. He's like the King of Emotion, uh, where she is like the Queen of Thinking of of sort of logic analytical. Uh, they are like completely on different ends of things here. And this might be where the relationship change came in. And, and finding domestic harmony is that maybe something had to change in this dynamic. Maybe somebody had to step away from somebody else. Uh, we were having trouble sort of living together or we had to find a new way of coming together, of being together, finding some common ground. I do feel like somebody had to stand their ground in something with this strength card. Uh, this is part of the perseverance. This is part of uh, somebody's work to gain uh, these karmic rewards. It's like somebody had to speak their mind. And it may have been this King of Cups. Sometimes the King of Cups, same with the Queen of Cups, there's somebody who can be a bit broody. So things are affecting them, things are upsetting them, but they know they don't always necessarily talk about it. Sometimes they get, uh, they sort of go within. And they just, like I said, they get broody, they get moody, they don't always talk about their feelings. That would be indicative with this Five of Cups here as somebody who's sort of uh, feeling stuck in those emotions, not able to to look at positive things around them because they're very hyper focused on negative things uh, that are going on in their life. And this this swords, the Queen of Swords, she might be someone who would just look at it from a different perspective, and someone who would be like, "Well, let's just let's just fix it. It's not about how it makes us feel. Let's just change it. Let's just fix it." Kind of thing. Uh, and it did leave. I feel like this King of Cups. 
probably emotionally felt like he was a little bit left out in the cold with this five of pentacles. This five of pentacles can also speak to the financial hardships that are going on, the stress that's going on. Like I said, somebody sort of internalized it and it would be indicative of this king of cups to sort of, to do that, to sort of shut down emotionally uh, and sort of go within. We also have the world card here too. So this world card is also speaking of karmic rewards. The world card is like positive things manifesting for you, but not ones that, this isn't luck. It's not something that shows up out of the blue or drops into your lap. This is something that has to be earned. Again, I get pulled back to like that perseverance, like that pushing through, uh, being able to keep moving forward, digging deep, uh, to be able to find a way to make it work. And this is where the world card comes in and, and positive things manifesting. And I just... We do have the Knight of Swords. He's like victory and truth and honesty, like being true to yourself, being open, being honest. And the Sun card is positive things manifesting. It's like doing this, persevering, being true to yourself. This is where you're getting uh, your positivity here. Uh, Queen of Pentacles, uh, the signs that go along with her, she's, she's somebody who's caring, she's somebody who's kind, she's somebody who's generous. She's not a completely different person in here. She's like another side of this Queen of Swords, uh, a side that probably doesn't show up very often, but that exists. I feel like this is part of the relationship. This is like part of the relationship, the committed relationship. It's like this king had to dig deep to actually say what was going on. It was probably like pulling teeth. I like, like I said, that those cups, they tend to, uh, they tend to bury things and just feel them really deep and then sort of uh, get really broody, really moody, probably not so much fun to live with. Uh, once he was able to sort of find the strength to break free of those kind of habits, to speak his truth, that truth and honesty, that is where he found victory. Because she is an understanding person. A lot of the qualities that'll go with her too is she can be somebody who's, who's very loyal who's very honest. Uh, she's kind of, she's in it for the long haul. And it's like, she was able to see that because she's like, she needs to hear it. She needs to be able to hear it out loud. That's just sort of how she functions. Uh, that's how she's able to sort of best problem solve uh, in her life. And so if he can dig deep, if he can say what it is, what's bothering him, what's going on, that he's stressed out about this, he's stressed out about that. It's like they can find that common ground. She can work with that. And this other side of her can come through. This side that is caring, that is generous, that is kind, that exists. I feel a commitment here. Like there is this relationship change. But I don't feel like there was a relationship that was split. I don't feel like people split in this one. I do feel that in a lot of my reads. I don't feel that in this one. Remember guys, this might not, uh, this might not resonate for you or it might sort of be in bits and pieces. This one's like a renegotiation. That's what had to happen in here. This one was like a renegotiation to be able to find joy, to be able to find harmony in the home. And it's an ongoing one. It's an ongoing one. So he still has the potential to slip into those old habits. I feel that in the cards. Like this isn't, we've completely changed, turned a corner. Everything's changed. It's fine from now on. No, this is going to be a work in progress. But as we go forward and as he keeps putting in the effort, he's going to see more of this side of her than this side of her. More of this, more of this caring. He's going to see more of this generosity. Uh, but he has to do the work too. As that perseverance is that changing the dynamic uh, and and that's, okay, that's where the parenting card comes in. Because I feel like she felt like she had to be a parent to him. Because he is like this broody little teenager, uh, maybe having hissy fits or acting out instead of just saying what the fuck was going on. But I do feel like there's been some sort of a dynamic change with him able to speak up about his feelings. It has changed the dynamic of things, but it is an ongoing thing because these are his natural tendencies to do this. So he's going to be fighting this for a while, really changing habits, changing the way that he communicates. Uh, but the benefits that come from it, the karmic benefits are this harmony and this happiness in the home life. It's going to help them to cooperate with this financial discipline, with changing their financial situation and really working as a team and getting back to those core traditional values and those vows that they took because there is a deeper commitment I feel within these cards. These people have a deep commitment to each other. And there it is, the Four of Cups. The Four of Cups is the Devil card. And this, the Four of Cups is like him emotionally withdrawing. 
And like I said, this is something that is is going to be is going to be a habit that he's done for a while. It's going to be something that he's going to have trouble breaking. And the devil card is like this destructive force. This tendency that he has to withdraw and be moody and not talk about what the fuck is going on. This has the tendency to have, uh, it has the potential to have a destructive force in their life uh, to contribute negatively to things going on and cause uh, more negative things to happen. So this is something he has to be aware of. These are challenges he needs to overcome. He needs to keep staying focused on changing and moving forward, changing that dynamic, keeping that commitment to the relationship and working together as a team. It will deepen their bond. In this case, the lover's card is speaking of the deep bond that they have and of this change of dynamic actually deepening that for them too. Alrighty guys, I'm also going to read you the numbers from the cards because remember these numbers might have special significance for you. And I know the yellow cards are a little bit tough to see. Uh, so we have 48, 4, 56, 63, 46, and 32. Uh, so like I said guys, that it might be it might be a birth date, it might be a phone number, uh, it might have to do with an address. Like you guys are gonna know if it has meaning to you, it's just gonna make sense to you. And I said in this read, it's a general read, so it might not be for everybody. It might sort of hit it in sort of bits and pieces for some of you, or maybe some of you uh, not so much. But in this one, I see like communication is gonna be key. Communication, forward movement, and and changing those habits, being able to open up so that we can see a different side of our partner, we can change the dynamic, and then deepen that connection. All right. Thank you guys for joining me and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care, everyone.